The last thing I thought I was going to need in 2024 was a new credit card, but the simplistic nature of the Apple card always caught my attention. After all, I do have an iPhone, which I use every day for about three hours every single day, and I'm willing to bet some of you use it for even more. Activating the card in the wallet app was an absolute breeze. It's about as simple as setting up a new pair of AirPods. You simply hold the card next to your iPhone, which is titanium, by the way, in case you didn't know. I know it's very much Apple-like, but then a menu bar comes up, which you can then activate the card. It's pretty slick. It's fast, easy, and it's painless. Other cards might require you to call a number and enter an activation code or wait for a long period of time, but not Apple. Everything is woven into their ecosystem so seamlessly, it's basically even grandma proof at this point. What is going on everyone? This is Riley with the Riley Reform channel, and today I wanted to take a closer look at the Apple card, talk about its features, its transparency, and most of all, if I think this card is worth it or not. Every time on the iPhone I opened up my wallet app, I was notified at the top of the app that I should apply for the Apple card. So it's always in the back of my mind like, hey, look at us, we're Apple, see, we have a credit card. Since Apple has most of my information already, I received an email without even asking at the very end of 2023, stating that if I set up the card today and spend $1,000 in the first 90 days, I would be given $150 of daily cash. So I finally caved. I was thinking about getting the Apple card for a while now, and this is the first major offer that I remembered seeing in my email. So I finally decided to take the plunge as I could fit this card pretty nicely into my other two cards that I currently have, which are a City Custom Cash card and a Discover Student card. Even though I'm no longer a student, they still let you have the card. It's clear that Apple primarily wants users to use Apple Pay based upon the the structure of the rewards, like how most credit cards give you points, which you then have to transfer over into cash or gift cards or a statement balance or a check. In true Apple fashion, they give you no flexibility at all, no options to select. They simply give you daily cash back. And I do want to emphasize, you don't get the cash back at the end of your billing statement, not Apple. Instead of like how most credit card companies give you the cash back at the end of the billing cycle, Apple gives you the daily cash back as soon as your transaction is posted, which is a huge change in how most credit card companies offer rewards. As soon as it's posted, you can spend it. I think this is very good as just money is the easiest currency to understand. You don't have to mentally transfer your points into how much money it is. It's just, this is how much money you have. If you use the card number like normal without Apple Pay, so you swipe the card or enter the card number on a website, they give you 1% daily cash back, which obviously is not a lot. If you use Apple Pay, which is is basically the only time that I personally will be using this card. They give you 2% cash back. You really should be using Apple Pay in places that it is accepted just because it is the most simple, secure, and I think the coolest way to pay. Just something about the haptic feedback when I'm using it is just pretty satisfying. And then finally, for rewards, there are a few places where you can use this card and get 3% total cash back. If you use this to buy Apple products or Apple subscriptions, you will receive the 3% percent cash back and there are also a few partners where Apple has partnered with that this is honored as well. Some of these partners include Nike, Uber, Panera, just to name a few. I don't see this as much of a benefit because how often are you really spending money just at these few stores? I mean overall you're using a credit card at a wide variety of places. Yes this is a nice bonus I guess but it's obviously not the primary reason that I got this card and I don't think this is the primary reason that you should get this card either. I personally applied for this card because I find myself in situations where when I use my other two credit cards, I know that I will not be getting the full 5% cash back. And with my other cards, if I'm not getting the full 5%, I'm getting just 1%. There's 
no in between. And if I'm getting just 1% back, I see that as kind of a waste as cash back potential. I feel like I could be earning more. If I know that I will be getting the 1% using a different card, I will choose to use my Apple card with Apple Pay because then I know I can get 2% on my everyday purchases. This was my mindset at first when I applied for the Apple card, which I think is a final piece to my credit card puzzle. But now that I have it set up, <laughs> Boy, I wish every card was this simple to understand. Apple always has a way of taking something, refining it, simplifying it, and just making it their own, which is mostly good for the end user. And it turns out, when you take all of these properties that I mentioned and apply this to a credit card, this is the most user-friendly credit card, I think, ever. And I don't see it being beat. For example, everything is so transparent from how much credit you have, the amount that you have spent with the card, when your payment is due, the current balance on the card, the interest that you would have to pay if you do not pay the card off in full every month, and even the transaction history. Because this card is really user focused first and then the bank second, it's pretty easy to see why Goldman Sachs has lost money with their end of the deal. Obviously, I feel pretty bad for the bank in this situation. Hmm, I roll. Obviously not, I'm joking, but there is a reason that Goldman Sachs and Apple seem to not be getting along, but more on that later. First, I want to start with the interest payments on this card. I'm not necessarily a credit card expert, but I'm pretty sure this is the only card to tell you how much interest you will have to pay. Why is this the standard? Why do I have to go digging and getting out a calculator and doing the long division to figure out how much I need to pay in interest? Granted, I have never had to pay interest on a credit card because I always pay it off in full as you should too, but I would have to probably go digging for over an hour and calculate how much interest I would have to be charged on my other credit cards. And if a lot of people don't know how much they have to pay, they might just not care at all if it's not easily accessible to them. You know the feeling when something is out of sight and kind of just out of mind? Banks are relying on this when you apply for a credit card. They don't truly want you to know how much you are paying because if you are paying interest, you're paying a lot. Paying a lot, in fact, and I'm not going to glorify credit card interest rates. This card definitely still has them. Generally speaking, though, I view all credit card interest rates as awful. They go from awful to super awful. They are always more than 15% at best and 30% at worst. If you think car rates or mortgage rates are bad, credit card rates are often more than double. All of this to say, while the Apple card has a fancy payment screen, make sure you are in the green and pay it off every month, no matter what card you're using. Another interesting, unique aspect of this card is the lack of anything on it. Most credit cards have a card number, an expiration date, a security code, a signature block, logos well not apple's card they have the bank the apple logo and your name you may be asking well riley where do i find out my card information then and it's very easy because it's all done in the app which i'm about to show you because this is what makes the card great i think it's important to show the wallet app because this is what makes the card just so easy to use and so user friendly so i'm going to take out my phone and show the spending and all of the features that it has. So I have my iPhone and I'm going to open the Apple Card app, which is the wallet app. So this is a big advantage of the Apple Card is that you don't have to install any extra app. It's already on your phone. It's just the wallet app. So let's go into wallet and then you'll see all your cards. The Apple Card is this first one here. A funny thing to note is that the Apple Card changes color based on the category that you spend. So it starts off as white and then changes colors. Kind of just an interesting concept. You'll see everything is laid out very easy to understand. Basically kind of everything you need to see at a glance is here. So you have card balance. This is the amount of the posted transactions. So, so far this month I have spent $740. So that kind of sucks. But the good thing is that every single Apple card is due the same day. So the, the last day of the billing cycle is the end of the month. So it's the same for everybody. So let's go into card balance real quick and see what is in here. All right. So you have a few things you right now I'm recording this in January. So you'll see my December balance, my new spending since then, and then my payment 
payments and credits. So I actually already paid off my full December balance. Tells you your total credit limit, the total balance that you have, and also the available credit. And here you also have statements. You'll see last month, like I said, spent 215 and earned 4.31 in daily cash. So that's $4 that I didn't have to do anything with besides spend money. Uh, and then in here you can download or export your transactions. And I'm not going to go into that because there's sensitive information in there. But uh, let's go to one tab down, monthly activity. So I really like this. So you want to keep track of your spending? Well, the Apple card breaks it down into categories very, very easy. So I haven't had this card for very long. It's currently January of 2024 and I got it December of 2023. So I basically only have this month to go from, but you'll see it breaks everything down just very easily. You'll see the categories there. Services is the biggest category that I've spent right now. Uh, so you can go into one of these categories and see kind of what transactions are in here. So it just allows you to get a good grasp on how much you're spending in what category. Maybe you don't know how much you're spending on food until it groups everything together and you're like, wow, I spent $19.64 on food food. When did I do that? Well, you can click it and you'll see here's all the food and drinks and you'll see at the top there's some tabs. So I'm viewing this by month, but if I had this card for a long time, I could even switch to year and you'll see, you can see last year, this year. It's just, it's laid out so clean. You can tr easily track your spending over long periods of time. It's something that I feel like you can't do very easily. I was trying to find this on my city card and I'm sure it's in there somewhere, but if I'm being honest, I could find it. I'm pretty tech savvy, I would say, so if I can't find it, then somebody else probably will not be able to find it. But uh, yeah, let's go back and see what other options are in here. So you'll see no payment due. So I've already paid my December balance because like I said, I paid off in full. So this is the fancy payment screen that you can go into and see how much interest you'll have to pay. I don't have any interest because I paid off my full balance, but you can drag this little circle thing and there is minimum payments and full payments, partial payments. It will show you all in here how much you want to pay and kind of what will happen if you pay that much. Right now, I have paid my balance off in full and basically everything I have now is not due yet. So right now I have no interest charges. If I didn't pay my balance off in full, it would tell me in here what interest it would pay me and then the amount varies. So obviously the more you pay, the less interest you will pay. It just makes it so clear. And here you could also schedule payments. So you can schedule one time or recurring. I set up recurring to pay off automatically on the due date in full. I paid it off before the due date, but I just set it up anyway in case I forget and then I won't be charged any interest. So it's good to do that. So for your daily cash that you receive, it allows you to put it in an interest bearing Goldman Sachs account. Technically, I have an account through Goldman Sachs and you'll see you could hover over your finger and see kind of how much you earned every day. So you'll see January 4th, I earned 71 cents of daily cash that day. And this account is also interest bearing, which is a great feature. So your cash that you don't spend for a while actually can earn a little bit extra money. That $1 that you received in a year would be like a dollar and 45 cents or something like that. If you want to see your card number at the very top here, there is a little card one, two, three thing. And in here, this is where you find your, your name, your card number, all of that stuff. So say your card number gets stolen or breached, you could come in here and request a new card number. So they don't need to send you a new card because there's actually no number printed on the Apple card. It's simply just virtual. And that has been the wallet app. I think the interesting part about the Apple card is that it's just done the Apple way. Somehow any other credit card like this would not be interesting at all. But this card was different because it's the Apple card. Apple took a boring old concept as credit cards have been around for decades at this point, they managed to make a card that was easy to understand, lack any unnecessary fees, makes interest payments a breeze, and it all just works so well when you're using an iPhone with a very easy to understand interface. This card is good because Apple made it and it integrates so well into their existing products. Not because the card itself is necessarily the best, I would argue maybe the rewards are far from it, but it does have a place in my wallet app.
I actually don't want to carry this heavy titanium card around with me. What impresses me most with this card is that I think it just is so user friendly. It's so user friendly in fact that the bank has issues with Apple and they've lost money because of just the user friendly policies. Goldman Sachs has lost their battle with Apple and they are moving on in a breakup unlike any other because it's a very expensive one I'm sure at that. Banks probably do not want you asking this question but if the only way banks can make money on credit cards is to hide the expensive fees and participate in legal but shady business practices, don't you think there's something wrong with this equation? Uh, and do you think that says a lot about Apple? Uh, I, I think it does in this situation. Goldman Sachs does want to drop Apple, and at some point they will no longer be the issuer of this card within the next year or two. But what does this mean for the Apple card? Well, no one is exactly sure, but Apple is a trillion dollar company. I'm sure they will hire the absolute best lawyers and find somebody willing to take them on and make this card even better than it is now because it has the Apple name associated with it, the Apple persona, and that's a big deal for some companies. But until then, I think this card is pretty great as it is now. And if you're looking for a card to take the plunge, maybe this is even your first credit card, I think the Apple card may be a good fit for you. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. This has been Riley with the Riley Reform channel. I hope you'll consider subscribing and liking the video as I will be making more credit card videos in the future. Last year, I made a video talking about the City Custom Cash Card. So if you're interested in that, please make sure to check out that video as well. But also let me know, what do you think of the Apple Card? Drop a comment down below. And as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope your day is as pleasant as you are. Shoo.